What's up YouTube, this is Drayden and today we're going to be making kind of a FM-ish reverb high pitch bass and hear what it sounds like. And also hear what it sounds in context. Alright, so in this video I want to go through uh, the concept I used to create that sound so you can create your own. So first open up uh, any VST you have, but I'm going to be using Serum for today. And you can achieve those type of sound with only um, basic shapes. So I'm just going to turn off all the effects for now. So first off, we're going to be using the square. It's under analog right over here and select the square wave. Right there, you can put LO41 onto the level and create that kind of a shark shape and turn the volume uh, up to 70 or 100. By doing this, the volume is going to go up and then down uh, following the LFO, right? So we're going to achieve a cleaner sound at the end and at the beginning. I also put the octave at minus one and I'm playing um, on a G1 right now. All right, so next you want to turn on oscillator A, turn the volume all the way down because we're not going to use the audio from uh, this uh, wavetable. It's going to trigger the FM from A right here. Uh, I put this one plus two and plus seven semitone, but you can always play with that and change the timbre of the sound. Next, I choose the sawtooth and I assign the level one to this knob right here and I select sync. What sync is doing, as you can see, the wavetable is like shrinking right now. So this is basically just gonna pitch up the sound. So I assign LFO one to the sync and put it to 50. And that's it for that. I also turn the random position all the way down. So it always start on that uh, yellow bar right there. Same for the square. All right. All right, so this is the sound we have. Cool. So next I turn on the filter and I choose the uh, high pass notch 12 right here. And I assign the LFO to the cutoff, to the resonance and to the frequency right here. So this cutoff will uh, move the high pass like this. The resonance will increase the um, resonance of the filter. And this frequency is going to change that notch right there. So by applying this filter, we're going to get a more uh, viral -y sound. All right, so that's it for uh, the oscillator. Let's go into the effects. I put another, well, it's an EQ, but it's more like a band pass. I've used the uh, high pass right there, kind of the same principle. Put LFO1 onto this one. And I put also a low pass right here. And... This is going to block the high frequencies, but it's going to let them go through only at the peak of the sound. Next, I put a hyper. The hyper is just to give some space and width to the sound. I also applied uh, this LFO to the mix right there. So if I increase it, just so you can see. By doing that, we only get a bit of the width uh, when the signal is all the way through right there. Also applied uh, this uh, dimension. If you're using serum and this dimension, really be cautious of like the uh, how much you you apply to the sound because it can really like mess up the the sound. If, uh, if I show you like that, you get kind of a weird delay going on. So I prefer to put the size like really really low, maybe zero, one, or two, and just uh, increase the mix a little bit. Cool, the flanger here, just to give a little bit of movement to the sound, but it's really not doing that much. Next, I put an OTT. Alright, cool. So next, what you want to do is um, apply more post-processing. So I applied this OTT. I'm not going to use this one for now, so don't mind that. Um, okay, I put a utility, but it's 
more like a gate. So I'm just opening up the gate when the sound is playing. So I don't have like any tail after this MIDI, uh, this MIDI note. So it doesn't like interfere with more basses or some things like that. Okay. Next, I'll apply this reverb. Uh, I'll show you the reverb. So I applied a low and a high cut. Uh, you don't want to, well, I'm going to say usually, you don't want to have uh, low frequencies in your reverb. So this is why I applied this low cut and I applied also a bit of a high cut just because the really, really high frequencies of a reverb can be annoying too. Uh, I don't think I've touched this. I think it's pretty standard. And I automated uh, this dry wet. Cool. Next, I apply Saturn. And this is something cool that you can keep in mind is that usually people put the reverb at the end of their chain, but you can also put some distortion after the reverb and it's going to create some distortion and glue the sound, well, the original sound and the reverb together. So it's a good trick to keep in mind. Next, I applied a fat filter, but it's just a low cut. Just so... I don't have like that mud in the low end, so I can apply a sub on a separate channel later on. And next, I put the glue compressor. And those settings are not that important. What is really important in that case is that I'm squashing the, um, the sound into the compressor. And what it's doing is that it's going to increase the level of the, uh, the reverb and decrease the level of the uh, bass sound. I'm also using some soft clip, but this is just to give it a little bit more distortion. So cool, so this is the sound, but if you want to play around with it, what I can recommend is try playing with the semitones and wavetable, of course, so you can achieve more uh, different timbre. Like that. You can also put um, more filters. In this case, I've prepared a comp filter. I'm just gonna put it back where it was. So I think with the comps, it creates a more aggressive sound, but I feel like it's messing with the pitch a little bit. It feels like a like if it was a it's a G so maybe a G sharp or something like this. So this is why I let it off, but you can play around with the um, with more filters. Let's try maybe a reverb. And you can have some cool uh, effects also if you do something like that. Just gonna close the reverb for now. Also, something that can be cool is that you remove that uh, LFO from the sound and put another one and just create a ramp like this. Uh, we're going to put that on trigger. Right now, the sound... So right now, this... Um, this uh, cutoff is following this LFO, right? So it's going up and then down. So if we do that, just mess around with it. So let's keep that, for example. And we're going to put back reverb. Also, if you want to make your sound more uh, metallic, you can add a short delay. So usually what people does is just add a delay. Uh, turn the dry wet, turn the feedback a little bit down like this, and they're gonna link the left and right and play around with the um, millisecond delay. So let me just turn on, uh, turn off the reverb. So we can hear right now. It creates that, you know, metallic effect, right? 
So this is cool. Actually, I like that. But if you really want to be like in pitch with your um, with your sound, what you can do is pull this filter and choose the com plus or mi minus right here. Turn on, uh, turn up the resonance, and just assign this cutoff to the same pitch as your note. So, for example, I'm just gonna show you what I mean. Right now, I'm playing a G, so you can find the frequency of the G in the in some charts on the internet. So, right now, a G is uh, 49 hertz. Right, I'm gonna go here and put 49. I had it right, right there. So right now, I know that my delay is in pitch, so I can just pull back the amount, just how I like it. Let's see the difference. And then we can put another OTT. So that's it for today. I hope you've learned anything. If you did, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.